Hey guys, Joe here, and we're going to be continuing on with part five of our analysis of the Cisco ICND-1 blueprint. If you haven't been watching, what we've really been doing in this series is breaking down the blueprint, going one section at a time, and kind of going through uh, not only the obvious stuff, but some of the more subtle things, and just talking about uh, the major points of the blueprint. So here we've got part five, IP services, and we'll just start here with uh, the first section, configure and verify DHCP on an iOS router. So pretty much, you know, straightforward cut and dry there. A lot of people don't know that uh, when they first start, you can actually use your Cisco router as a DHCP server. So they go through and uh, specifically point out a couple of the different things. So first of all, how do we make our router actually get its IP address using DHCP? We simply go to the interface and we do a IP address DHCP command instead of assigning it manually a network address and a mask. When we're creating our DHCP server on the router, what we're going to do is create something called a DHCP pool. And inside that pool construct, we're going to give it all the DHCP options. So this, these are going to be things like uh, the network range we're going to serve out IP addresses for, what's the default router, what's the domain name, what are the DNS servers, what are the WIND servers that we want to hand out, and potentially uh, even some more advanced options, but they're all under the same basic construct. Excluded address means basically one command. It's going to be IP DHCP excluded dash address, and then we're going to put in the range of the addresses that we want to exclude from being handed out from DHCP. So this is good when you've got something like a router or a pool of different servers that might be in the same general range of your DHCP pool, but you don't want to hand those addresses out to avoid IP address conflict. And then the least time, like I was saying, is actually configured under the pool as well. So you're going to specify the least time of the IPs you're handing out in terms of days or hours. Okay, moving right on here into ACLs, a big part of this particular section. So basically what we're saying in 5.2 is we need to understand the theory of all these different kinds of ACLs. Now you can really break down ACLs into a couple different categories. You have standard ACLs and extended ACLs, and then you have named and you have numbered. So in other words, you could have a standard named ACL, you could have a standard numbered ACL, you could have extended named and extended numbered. So what are the basic differences? Your standard ACLs, if we're talking about standard numbered, are going to be between numbers 1 and 99, or 1300 through 1399, if you're using the, uh, the other reserved range there. Whereas extended, if we're looking at numbered, is going to be 100 through 199, or 2000 through 2699. So important that you should know those. Functionally, a standard ACL your, is a lot more basic. You can only match on... Uh, source IP address and mask, okay, as opposed to a extended ACL. You can do not only source, but you can do destination, and then you can also get into the higher levels of the protocol stack up to layer 4 by matching things like uh, layer 4 protocols like, say, TCP or UDP port numbers, okay? So that's extended named numbered. The log option is simply an extra keyword we add on to the end of our ACLs that lets us uh, create a syslog entry anytime that particular line in the ACL is hit. So you're going to want to study up on those. Again, these videos are not to go over in detail the technology, just to kind of review the blueprint and what we're trying to, uh, to accomplish here. So then 5.3 is just really an extension of 5.2. Now they're saying not only do you need to know the theory, but configure and verify these types of ACLs. So this is saying you really need some actual experience on a router, configuring named ACLs, numbered ACLs, and that logging option, and you need to know how to verify it. So configuring it is a little bit out of the scope of this. Verifying, you're going to look at things like show access list. Moving on here into... NAT. So 5.4 is really saying we need to understand uh, the basic purpose of network address translation, and we need to understand the theory of all these different kinds of NAT. Now, I actually have a really good uh, blog article on this. I'll go ahead and link to in the description of this video, but it goes through all the different kinds of NAT 
on a Cisco IOS router with actual real-world examples and configuration. So I'll uh, throw that in there here for you guys. I'm not going to go over this in too much detail, okay? but basically uh, we need to understand NAT, and we need to, as we can see in 5.5, .5, be able to configure and verify these different variations of NAT. And then finally, 5.6, configure and verify NTP as a client. This is basically uh, one command we need to know. So from global config mode, NTP server, and then the IP address of the NTP server you want your client to point to. To verify it, you're going to look at show NTP associations or show NTP status. Now that's going to about do it here for section 5 of our blueprint, which again is uh, IP services. Thanks everybody for watching. You can follow me over on Twitter at jasterino, or like I said, check out the blog at asterinonetworks.com. If you're enjoying the videos, subscribe here, and uh, let me know what you're studying, what you might be having a challenge with here uh, with your ICND1 studies, and I'll try to answer your questions and help you guys out as much as I can. Again, check out that blog article on NAT. I think if you're just getting started with ICND1 or your CCNA, you'll find it really useful. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.